Good morning, adventurers. My name is Ben, and welcome to a morning show where I sit around, drink some tea, and talk about D&D. Mmm. It's so hot. Uh, <laughs> anyway, kicking it off today with TND, uh, I have my uh, Touch Me I'm Vaccinated Cancun uh, Mexico mug that I did not get from Cancun. Um, also, please don't touch me just because I'm vaccinated. Uh, that's, a, that's a weird thing. But it's a funny mug, so I've got it. And in it, finally, after many, many weeks of waiting, we have... Some DNT. My order finally came in over the weekend. Um, it, very, very excited about it. Um, this is the, as you can see here, Shadowfell Slumber. Uh, it's an herbal tea. It's it's a non-caffeinated one. I also have a Palace Elixir, which is out, obviously not here, not being had right now. Uh, this one is a hibiscus elderberry currant, uh, essential oil, raspberry, blueberry, sea salt, citric acid, malic acid uh, blend. Uh, it's very good. Very, very rich, um, and I am a big fan of it so far. Uh, I had one other cup of it um, outside of this, and it was very good then, too. So, uh, I'm here to tell you, it's very good. Um, and honestly, they have some gigantic tea leaves in here. Like, these are some of the biggest loose leaf tea leaves that I have seen in sort of like a mass market kind of setting. So, highly recommend that because they are, uh, it's hard to get tea that is like, a, a good solid like quality leaf so definitely recommend that if nothing else from it um getting into what we were talking about today uh we missed something last week with the release of uh journeys to the radiant citadel uh sorry there's this hair that's bothering me sorry um we missed something last week with the release of journey through the radiant citadel uh there was an unearthed arcana that was released two days prior to that for some reason uh they kind of buried it uh they didn't really bury it. Like, they made the whole announcement and everything like that. But, like, they released it um, without any, like, bells and whistles. Not, actually, not even two days prior. They released it the day before it came out. Um, a week ago today, Monday. Um, so, they're, they just kind of dropped it out of nowhere. It seemed like I didn't see anything coming up for it. But I've also been kind of distracted. So, I, I don't know that I uh, would have noticed it. But uh, we're going to talk about that today. Because it's interesting and a little odd to me, um, and I'll get into that and in why in just a second. Um, later this week, I might be talking about the D&D movie trailer because it's pretty, I think it's pretty cool, um, but it might be old news at that point too, so who knows if we're actually going to talk about it. But today we are talking about this here on Earth Arcana. Let's get into it. It is called Wonders of the Multiverse. By that title alone, you should be able to kind of understand why I think it's a little odd uh, that they're releasing it now, just kind of in general. Um, and you might be... Actually, I guess there's two reasons that you could be thinking that. And the first one, you would be wrong. It's not because we had Monsters of the Multiverse come out already this year. That's a little strange anyway. But um, the reason that it's e weird to me is that Spelljammer comes out in a month. Less than a month. In like four weeks. And uh, this feels like material that should be in Spelljammer. Uh, and so it's a little strange to me that they went ahead and they are just kind of tossing this out there, making me think that they're going for a Planescape, Planeswalker kind of setting, maybe coming out in 2023 at some point, which would be pretty cool. But at the same time, it, it's just a little odd to me. Um, I uh, am excited to get to go through this because I actually think that it is overall pretty cool. I think that uh, it's got stuff that I really enjoy in it, which makes me a little bit more partial to it. But um, let's go ahead and let's get into it. Uh, one thing I do like that they've been doing recently is they give you the list of things that are available in this document at the top of the document, which is great because it's a 12 page document and I don't want to have to scroll and find all the different headings in order to know what is going on in this particular set of UA. So this one gives us a new race, a cleric subclass, ding, ding, ding for me, if you know anything about me, uh, some backgrounds, some feats and some spells. So let's go ahead and let's run through these real quick. I'm not going to like dwell on them too heavily in any particular uh, set because it's a 12 page document you can read it yourself um, there are just some things that I want to highlight out of here so first and foremost the glitchling a creature type um, it's created by quote the forces of planar law glitchlings are winged human like creatures from a merger of magic and machine uh, these explorers seek to learn all they can about the multiverse and its creatures some glitchlings then carry what they learn back to the lawful planes like mechanists to inform the orderly working of the multiverse um, which is an interesting kind of cool concept they are beings forged by planar energy a lot of this is multiversal sort of travel kind of deal um 
and so it's it's they are kind of like a warforged but planar instead of like war based and they've got wings um so some of the things you get from that you are a construct which is a, a good starting point if you are a construct as opposed to uh humanoid or uh fey whatever if you are anything other than a humanoid as a race you already kind of have a leg up on anything that specifically targets humanoids because even though you may be humanoid in shape you are not a humanoid creature type so having it be a construct creature interesting start uh your medium walking speed is 30 feet armor plating your metal skin is reinforced with armor plates while you aren't wearing armor your base ac is 14 plus dex that's a fantastic early game armor class uh quite frankly better than any light armor you can get period so this is honestly going to probably be something that rogues are really into because they're going to be dexy characters and you don't you don't have to find armor for it outright this is the feature that i think is really really good this next one balance chaos when you make an attack roll or a saving throw and roll a nine or lower on the d20 you can balance chaos and treat the roll as a 10 you can balance that chaos oh Balance cast a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, regaining on a long rest. That is so good. The option to do that on any attack roll or saving throw is so, so good. If you are a rogue, say, and you have a plus, I don't know, nine to hit with your weapon, or seven. We'll go with seven. That is if you have a uh, an 18 and a plus three proficiency bonus. We'll go with that. You're getting a 17 in attack roll. You you can land whatever that hit is. So if you are primed and like revved up with whatever it is, you can almost guarantee yourself that hit because 17 is a significant uh, like armor class ranking to hit at levels, what is it, three through seven? I want to say that's what it is. That is. I'm probably off on that. But point is, that is a good ability. And then if you have uh, proficiency in certain uh, saving throws that you need, uh, you can go ahead and use that. If you are trying to maintain concentration on a spell and you're taking a bunch of little bits of damage, this is great because if you fail one of those, you can go, no, that's a 10 instead, and then keep rolling. Um, and that's really, really fantastic. Uh, this is this is a very good feature. A very, very good feature, and is not one to be overlooked. Um, living Construct. Uh, you were created to benefit from spells that preserve life but normally wouldn't heal Constructs. Uh, cure wounds, healing word, master wounds, master healing word, and spare the dying. All those give you healing, which is good. That is a change from normal constructs. That is sort of the direction they're going with PC construct characters, and that is an important thing to keep in mind as well as you go through this. Um, you get advantage on wisdom, insight, checks, and saving throws made to avoid uh, charm and vestigial wings. You have wings that allow you to have limited flight. Um, you gain the ability uh, a number of times equal to proficiency bonus to fly in a limited sense equal to your walking speed um, if you're in the air at the end of the turn you fall back to the ground so it it's a good like little bump uh, it's kind of like the eagle from barbarian the top eagle i want to say it's the top um, that lets you fly in a limited sense and then you are done at the end of the turn a little bit of height is always going to be helpful always um, and that's just how it goes uh, the cleric subclass. Um, this is the fate domain cleric subclass. I was a little disappointed when I started reading this. I was like, these are some weird kind of really niche features. And then I kept going and I went, oh, that's really good. Oh, that's, oh my God, that's really good. So let's go ahead and let's run through these right quick here. First up, your spell list. It's fine. It's nothing too crazy. Dissonant whispers, heroism, sea invisibility, warding mon, beacon of hope, clairvoyance, death ward, divination, uh, commune, and Gaius. Those are all good spells. They're all fine spells. They fit really well with the theme, but they are not like going to be some of your default go-to kind of spells. Uh, maybe it is if that's like the way that you're playing your character, but none of, not none. Most of these are not like combat spells. They're not things that you run into in a social setting or a combat setting. They're things when you're doing exploration, research, that kind of thing. With the exception of things like Beacon of Hope, Heroism, a couple of those. For the most part, if you were playing into this idea, you're going to be playing outside of the combat circles with those spells specifically. Uh, Omens and Portents. I was excited. It said Portent in the title of this one. It's a first level feature. Does not. It's not Portent. Um, it allows you to uh, cast Augury. Uh, aug, aug, augury. I don't actually know how to pronounce that. Augury I'm going to go with. 
uh, without expending a spell slot and with no components at all when you cast it this way you can't uh, do so again until you finish a long rest in addition until you finish that long rest when you cast a divination spell that includes a chance the dm gives you no answer or random reading such as augury commune or divination reduce the chance of it being successful by 25 percent like weird kind of specific but you know whatever that's fine uh ties that bind uh action you can touch again first level feature action you can touch uh an object or creature and magically tie it um to yourself for an hour until you use it again uh unwilling must succeed on a wisdom saving throw uh while the target is bound to you and uh, on the same plane of existence you can sense the direction and location uh and movement if it is in motion um in addition when you cast a spell using a spell slot to deal damage or restore hit points, uh, you add or subtract an extra d6 to that number rolled. Number of times you believe proficiency bonus per long rest. This is where it starts to get much better, in my mind. Uh, second level, Channel Divinity. Strands of Fate. Use your Channel Divinity to manipulate the strands of fate and weave around other individuals. As a bonus action, you can enter the state for a minute or until you lose concentration, as if uh, you're concentrating on the spell, for the duration. Whenever another creature you can see makes an attack or ability check you can use your reaction to give that roll advantage just straight up advantage on anything you can see with there's no range it can be 500 feet away from you as long as you can see it you can use it on that that lets you plant yourself pretty far back if you need to be planted pretty far back with your team and that is very very good uh level six insightful striking this bonus action you choose one creature you can see within 30 feet of you your magic grants you a brief vision of the target's defenses um you gain one of these two effects uh either the next time you make an attack roll against the target you add a d6 uh to your roll or the next time it makes a saving throw you, against a spell you cast you roll a d6 or it rolls a d6 and subtracts it from the saving throw that one is really really good um both the fact that like a lot of spells require attack rolls and the fact that you can subtract from their saving throws that is so so good a d6 as well can have a massive massive impact like bane or bless in its own right is a fantastic kind of spell to have stocked because it will turn the tide of things for you adding in the fact that it's a d6 instead of a d4 is so 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 good um it is something that you have to do to prep for the turn that you're on essentially because you're you're gonna which whatever your action is going to be is what is being affected by this more than anything else um again proficiency bonus per long rest uh eight you get potent spell casting same as half of the other cleric subclasses add your wisdom modifier to uh damage with a uh, cantrip and level 17 is also very good very very good visions of the future you can cast the foresight spell once without expending a spell slot when you cast it this way, the spell's duration is one minute for that casting. Once you cast it in this way, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest. Yes, it's only one minute, but if you know you're walking into combat and you go, okay, free ninth level spell for the next 10 rounds of thing on you that you get advantage on everything for, that's so good. That's so, so fantastic. And yes, it can be yourself. It can be a, an ally. And yes, it has to be like, you know, specifically, it has to be um, one minute, and it can't be... Uh, oh, my God. What am I trying to say here? Uh, it's concentration. It only lasts for a minute, everything like that. But it is so good. Foresight is a fantastic spell, and it's one that's hard to stock because you're like, do I really want to take this spell in place of something else? It's so good. It's a really, really fantastic feature. Um Moving forward, we have backgrounds in this section. I'm not going to run through those quite as heavily um, because they're kind of flavory things. There are a couple of them that are pretty good. The most important thing to get from the background section is the following. Um, if the DM decides to allow any of the backgrounds in this section, so in this section of the document, all characters in the campaign, regardless of backgrounds, uh, gain access to a bonus feat. Um, if you select one of these backgrounds, you gain the bonus feat specified in that background. If... Uh, the background you choose, any of the other ones, doesn't provide a feat. You gain a bonus feat of your choice from the list that is laid out here. Scion of Elemental Air, Scion of Elemental Earth, Scion of Elemental Fire, Scion of Elemental Water, Skilled or Tough. Um, so obviously those first four are new in this document. The other two are fantastic things to just have on hand. Tough, 
Tough is my go-to when I'm like, man, I need a f if I'm building a high-level character, and I'm like, man, I could pick up a feat here. I don't know what I want to do. I get tough because more hit points are never a bad thing. So, the fact that if you add these backgrounds in and somebody picks one of them, you gain, you can, you have access to a feat like that or skilled where you just get more skills. That's really good. That's really, really good. Uh, the backgrounds are in no particular order. Uh, Gate Warden, um, Giant Foundling, Planar Philosopher, and Rune Carver. Uh, again, backgrounds in 5e don't add a whole lot. You get like one minor feature more than anything else. But um, with this, with any of these, you get a feat that goes with it that's listed in this document, um, which is cool. But uh, the backgrounds are just that. They're backgrounds. Uh, they're all linked to like interplanar things, which is pretty cool. But that at the end of the day, they don't do a whole lot mechanically for you. So they're, they're cool. And if you are interested in the way that any of those sound, definitely check them out. But they're not, they, they don't have like major game defining mechanics held within them somewhere they could if you use them the very specific ways that they need to be but for the most part they're just really cool to have um feats i'm not gonna i'm not gonna read through all of them there's a lot of feats in this document actually and i don't know that i love all of them but there's a lot of them that are pretty good uh so in order i guess um these have several that are minimum level feats as well uh first i mean they are either first or fourth level. We're gonna start with all the first, then we're gonna do all the fourths. First, uh, Rune Carver Apprentice, Scion of Elemental Air, Scion of Elemental Earth, Scion of Elemental of Fire, Scion of Elemental Water, Scion of the Outer Plains, and Strike of the Giants. Fourth level, Agent of Order, Baleful Scion, Cartomancer, Cohort of Chaos, Ember of the Fire Giant, Fury of the Frost Giant, Guile of the Cloud Giant, Keenness of the Stone Giant, Outland, Outland's Envoy, Planar Wanderer, Righteous Heritor, Rune, Carver, Adept, Soul of the Storm Giant, and Vigor of the Hill Giant. So, uh, these are interesting. I've said it before. I will say it again. I don't like feats that stack on top of each other. I understand the appeal of them. I personally don't like them. A lot of these stack on top of each other. They, The reason that there are minimum levels for a lot of them is because you have to have gotten a different feat ahead of time. I don't mind it being... Uh, that you are required to be a certain class. I don't remind, mind it being you are required to do any number of things. I just don't love that there is like a skill tree building thing going on here for some of them, but not all of them. That's, I think, where I kind of get stuck. And I I didn't play 3-5, but I know that that is a way that 3-5 was. And the fact that 5th edition is moving in a more roleplay-centric, less number-crunchy direction makes me not it makes me kind of cringe against those stacking feats like that um just because it it might add depth for some aspect of it but it's not going to add the depth that like three five had where everything was like built on itself you could build these super intricate mechanical characters because it's like two feats and so it feels like it it feels like a shell of what it could be in the right system and it feels like it falls flat for 5th edition. Um, but there's one aspect of this whole document here, and really when I say the whole document, I mean the feats and the spells section, that ha hasn't been touched on to this point. And it doesn't make a lot of sense in it for me, but it does. it, it is in here, um, and it's the only other thing I'm really going to hit on in here, is the fact that they have these features and things that are focused around the deck of many things. Like the Cardamancer spell is seemingly influenced by the way that the deck of many things operates in a in a weird way um in that it is required to be fourth level and you have to be a sorcerer warlock or wizard and all you learn to channel magic through cards which feels like it should be a bard subclass i've written a college of cards subclass i i think it's cool i found a couple of them online i think they're really cool um and so it's weird here um where you can use your it lets you use a deck of cards as your spellcasting focus add an extra d4 of damage to stuff you can do card tricks as part of prestidigitation, and uh, you can uh, essentially put a spell into a card, which is cool, but a little odd. Um, and then shifting downward through the rest of these uh, feats to the spells themselves, this, it says outright that the spells are inspired by the deck of many things. 
Which again is weird, because like it hasn't been brought up up to this point in here. <laughs> but the spells are Spray of Cards, Antagonize, House of Cards, Summon Warrior Spirit, and Summon Spirit of Death. Um, or Spirit of Death. So, uh, it's, just, it's, it's a weird flavor to have in there. Um, but you can kind of figure out what these are based on the name of the spell. Um, like, obviously, Spirit of Death is the skull card that summons the Avatar of Death to fight you. Same concept. Summon Warrior Spirit summons the level... It's not a level 4, but is the equivalent of summoning the level 4 NPC to help you. Like, it's just kind of in there. Um, so that feels like it's tacked on at the end in a weird kind of capacity. Um, the feats as a whole feel like they rope into the rest of the feel of everything better. Um, and so I'm not super sure why they decided to just stick in the deck of many things stuff at the very end because it it is odd and it it's not uncomfortable but it feels awkward to me in there i don't know let me know what you think because i i don't really know i'm excited about this subclass i'm excited about the race that goes in there um but the just the the rest of it feels eh. let me know what you think about stacking beats because i i don't like them obviously but to each their own um but that is everything i have to talk to you guys about on that let's move on to the shows that we have today and tomorrow First up today, Monday, we have the Paper Dungeon, Chromatic Dice, Beyond the Realms, Unprepared Casters, Greetings Adventurers, Bards of New York, Hapless Years, Ivan Adventures, Cast Party, Three Black Halflings, Hello from the Magic Tavern, King Leo D&D, Antiheroes Anonymous, the, the Tabletop Tavern, it's not back yet, but they will be soon, Top of the Round, and League of Lady Adventurers. And tomorrow we have Diary of a Dragon Pit, Star Wars First Resistance, Dungeons and Daddies, Bombarded, Heck of a D&D, Glass Cannon, and the Queer Questers. Go check them out. Let them know that I sent you because, again, someday it's going to come back to me that somebody said that, and I'm going to think it's hysterical. But until then, we're just going to keep saying it until we do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's everything I have to talk to you guys about. So thank you so much for making me part of your morning routine. I really do appreciate it. And thank you so much in particular to my patrons. You guys are the ones that make this show possible. If you're interested in becoming a patron, check out the link in the episode description here. Um, yeah, that's it. So with all that said, don't forget, everybody, drink tea, play D&D, &D, and... Keep on rolling. <laughs>